Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel, and thank you for joining. Now, in today's episode, we're going to give you a complete guide of your of our um, watch list. It <laughs> doesn't even make sense, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a complete guide, full, uh, everything you need to know about watch lists. Now, what is a watch list, you might ask? Well, just come down, I'm going to show you. That's why you're watching the video, just come down. Anyway, we're going to go into full graphs, details, uh, price projections, everything, about every player you want to, to know in your watch list. Well, it's going to be my watch list, but I'm going to show you how to create one. Okay, if you don't know, you probably don't even know what a watch list is, some of you, okay? Well, I never use this watch list, but I'm just doing it just for the exercise. Okay, just come down. Let's continue. Now, in your um, in your app here, in your video thing or whatever they call this thing, okay? It's a um, your team sheet or your, when you go to classics, you go to my team, okay? In this thing here, uh, you have um, your fixtures on your right-hand side. You have the fixtures. This is underneath my head, okay? You can see my head there. Fixtures, my scores... And watch lists. Let's go to watch lists, okay? Now I've created a small watch list of some players, okay? Here they are. Now I don't, I, I don't normally use this thing, okay? So I thought this for the first time I'm going to use this. I mean, it's there for a reason, right? So I might as well use it to see what it's going to do for me. Now I've added some players in there, okay? Now I'm going to show you first of all how to add players in there, right? So first you go to players, okay? You don't have to go to players. You can actually do many different ways, but let's do players. All right, and let's just say we click on um, let's click, click on a player. Okay, let's say well, I'm gonna click on someone that I don't have in that watch list. So let's click on Jerry Cameron. Okay, now here it says add to watch list. All right, so let's add him to the watch list. Uh, add to watch list, and he's added. Okay, you can see added player to watch list. So now I've got Jerry Cameron in my watch list. Now let's go back to this watch list. Uh, hang on. My team, so you have to, to go in there, you have to go through my team, okay? Watch list. Okay, now, first of all, English, okay? Now, English is priced at 670k now. Some of you are, are thinking about getting him in now, okay? I think the horse is bolted. Um, it's break even at 103. Yeah, have a look at his opponents coming up. They're actually quite easy. Okay, he's got he's got Shrek this week. This will probably be his toughest opponent. Then he's got Hawthorne. Then he's got GWS. Then he's got Carlton. Oh my God, it's going to be easy. Then he's got Adelaide. Okay, it gets tough for him in round 11. So it's a good run. This is actually a really good run for English. Okay, and one, two, three, two games in Mar in, in Marvel Stadium under uh, undercover. One at Optus. This will be the toughest week. Uh, one in... um. GWS, but this is in Canberra, I think. Uh, Monica Oval and uh, Mars Stadium. Where's Mars Stadium? Anyway, one's at Mars Stadium. Okay, so he's going to go to Mars <laughs> to play a game. That's unbelievable. Um, I went. Well, I once flew to go to Jupiter to, to watch a game, but that was a long travel. But I'm not going to go to Mars. It's too far. Who want to go to Mars Stadium to watch a game? Anyway, forget about that joke. All right, just come it down. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Uh, Team English, when I said the horse was bolted, uh, you still got a chance to get him, all right? 670k. Now, how are you going to get, get English in your team? What can you do to get English? Well, you've got, you got two options, okay? Uh, if you have Marshall or if you've got Shrek or Grundy as your second ruck, they're your options, all right? Now, it's going to cost you... Uh, actually, it's quite cheap from Grundy. If you go from Grundy to, to, to English... Actually, we could do it this week. If Grundy's not playing this week, I'm going to do it this week. I mean, if, if Gorn isn't playing, i just go Grund Grundy to English. Okay, that's one option. That can cost me um, about 70K. So that's one thing you can do. Or you can go Marshall to English. Okay, that's a second option. But I'd rather go Marshall to Gorn. All right, because it'll be a straight swap. And you can, so you can go Grundy to English, then go Marshall to Gorn when Gorn's price drops. So that's your option. But that's only if Grundy... Uh, is not playing is is not the solo rock this week. So that's what I'm gonna, that's my plan. All right, that's the plan this week. Just come it down. That, that's um I, actually it's not the plan, but it, it might be a plan if I if I decide to do it. Okay, that's an option. Okay, the second player on the watch list is Clayton Oliver. Okay, when do we get him in? All right, now his break even is one sixty eight. Now break even of one sixty eight. Uh, plays against Richmond. If he scores a 130, he drops 17k, all right? 
Then he played against North Melbourne. If he scores a 140, he drops another 5k. So you've lost 21k. It's not really a big loss, okay? And um, so his price goes down. Uh, 21 670k all right so um you can wait i mean i'm waiting okay i don't, I don't want to pay that kind of cash because cash is king right now i don't want to waste my money uh, on one player like a lot of my a lot of my cash so i want to hold it a bit longer and get other and fill up or everywhere else then get him last okay or not last but <laughs> that's when the horse are bolted and my team's losing but i'll get him i'll try to get him as soon as i can as soon as he drops in price i need someone else to tag him all right now you got lucky neil yeah with lucky neil He's already lost 40k. It's a good deal, okay? Now, his break even is 90. Uh, he'll easily get that. I'm surprised it's so high. And um, so he's projected to go up in score, uh, up in price by 12k and 20k. That's provided he scores 118 and 127. Then he's coming back down again by 11k. So virtually his price range is around about the 650 mark because it's not really that cheap, is it? It's, six, it's already about 636. It's not like he's, he's cheap. Now, he scores 95, 100, 117, 102. None of these scores are captain scores. Okay, so he hasn't been captain material like he was last year early on, except for this week, he went 176. Uh, upcoming opponents, you know, he has GWS. Uh, this could be a good game for him. Um, then he has Fremantle, Carlton, now, Carlton and Essendon may tag him, okay? Carlton may use um, uh, Kurno, and Essendon may use Setterfield, who was useless as a tagger. Uh, so there could, be a, there could be a two tags coming there. And now, he has around 12 buy. I'm not getting him until after his buy, so hopefully he doesn't go nuts, and I can get him later on. And that's my plan, but it doesn't mean that has to be your plan, okay? But um, he'll, he's still going to cost you about 600 to 630 Now, if you're going to spend that kind of cash... Uh, you have Took Miller, who's 624. Now, this is a bargain. Now, 624, Miller also hasn't been captain material. 113, 106, 109, 122, 127. Barely just touches on the captain material mark. Uh, should you get him? Well, his draw's good. He's got North Melbourne, then Richmond. All right, he's got a tough game against Melbourne. Then he's got West Coast. So he's got three, three out of four games very easy. All right, then he's got a tough game against the Lions and Dogs because they'll, they'll both be tough. Then he has uh, Adelaide, Carlton, Hawthorne. Uh, it's not a bad draw. His tough games, well, they haven't really been that. His tough game probably Sydney, and he got 113 against Essendon, 106. That's not much against Essendon. Uh, against Geelong, that was an easy game. We've got only 109. It hasn't been really going nuts. But that's um, Took Miller. If you want to get Took Miller this week. Now, another player to watch is Caleb Sorong, okay? Now, I've noticed something with Sorong that's a little bit different, and no one's picked it out yet, okay? Let me show you something. This is actually quite... In, but the pr problem is, he's 573. He would have been awesome at 499k when we, when he started, okay? He's 573k. His scores have been 70, all right? Uh, 101, 146, 100, and 146, now, I've noticed that he's been spending 85% time on ground uh, compared to last year when it was around about 75 to 77%. So his time on ground has increased. Two years ago, he was around about 60% 60, 60 time on ground mark. So he's really spending more time on ground, which, which means he can get more points. It's not like he's playing any better. He is playing good, but he's, he's able to spend more time on ground, and that's been a major factor for him. Uh, so it's something you need to think about. Let me show you some of his maps. We go to the, we go to Caleb Sorong's heat maps. Okay, now one thing to take notice of is the time on ground. Okay, uh, this year eighty five percent, eighty two percent, eighty, eighty five, eighty two. Last year seventy three, seventy two, eighty two, seventy two, seventy six, seventy one, seventy three, and I could go to twenty twenty one. Okay, twenty twenty one similar, even at sixty six. But his time on ground has increased, like, a lot, okay? It's gone up 10%, uh, so his scoring has gone up. Uh, now, his heat map last week was sensational, okay? That's a heat map, okay? I paid 700k for that heat map, okay? That's a good heat map. Now, scored 146 points. Yeah, that's a good heat map. Now, in round, uh, round four, again, he only scored 100 points this game, all right? But that's, a, that's an awesome heat map. Um, so his 
He's in the right areas, okay? He's, he's where we want him as a midfielder. Now, this is round three. Again, uh, he's all around the middle, okay? All around the middle, okay? It's a perfect heat map. He's virtually wherever the ball is. So his heat map is, is awesome, okay? Uh, does it show tackles? What is he tackling? Look at this. Six, seven, eight, five. That's his tackle counts. Huge, huge numbers, okay? In round one, only one tackle. Round one, only 70 points. What did he do in round one? Where, where was he in round one? Same. It's the same heat map, just didn't get the ball, okay, compared to um, round two, three, four, and five. So round one, he was rusty. Um, would I get him? I don't know. Uh, I, I can't answer. It's hard. It's a, it's a tough one, okay? I, I'd probably go for... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep my options open, okay? I mean, I wouldn't say no to him, okay? But um, it, it's a risk, all right? Would I get him? I don't know. Um, I, I'm a risk taker, but uh, I started him last year. <laughs> Would you believe? I started him one year too early, uh, and I didn't end up, uh, and I traded him out after one week. So I'm not sure. Anyway, that's wrong. Now, on the watch, this is Saad. He's dropped, but Saad, we're too early on Saad. So don't worry about Saad. We had Zach Merritt in here, but he's, he's suspended for one week. So he's out. Let's go to Jake Lloyd, okay? Um, everyone's asking about Jake Lloyd, okay? What's Jake Lloyd done this year? He's done, he's gone 100, 102, 93, 120, 119. These are huge scores, okay, for a defender, especially at his price. 519, and he's, he's break even 70, okay? And he's very consistent. That's why his price isn't going nuts, because it's it's a, it's a steady rate. Right, let's go have a look at some of his scores, Neil. Now, the first thing I want to point out is his averages in um, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. These are big averages. 112, 108, 122, 107. And then something happened to him in 2022, down to 92. So what we're going to try to find out today, all right, is does he have the same role he had back then? Or does he have the same role he had last year, but he's doing it better? Okay, that's what we're going to find out. Let's see what's happening with him, okay? This is actually a very good exercise for all of you to, to have a look at, Neil. We're going to have, take a look at Jake Lloyd from 2021, okay? And then 2022, just a couple of games, not all of them. Then all his games in 2023. Let's see what he's doing. Let's let's start from 2023 first, okay? Just come down. All right. Now, the first thing to take note of, okay, where he's starting, center half back. Now, this is interesting. Okay, 2023, one, two, three, four, five games, all of them, he's starting center half back. Uh, in 2022, he was he was back pocket, half back flank. Half half back flank, half back flank, half back flank. So he's changed his role to center half back now. Now, this is very interesting, okay? Now, now, now it's it's captured my own attention now. Everyone just come down. Don't get too excited now, okay? Uh, everyone sit down first. Everyone make sure you're sitting down and don't fall off the chairs, okay? Now, let's have a look at his heat map. Okay, let's have a look. It's in a half back. Well, that's not really a good heat map. It's a, it's okay, but it's not 120 worth. Uh, what's he done here, actually? Let's take a look at the kick-ins. What's he doing? We're in 2023 kick-in breakdown, Okay. Who's taking all the kick-ins? Let's have a look. Well, Blakey is taking a lot of kick-ins, and he's sharing it with Lloyd. So it's not like Lloyd's taking over all the kick-ins, okay? Actually, Blakey's got more of them, okay? So he's not getting the points from the kick-ins. He is, but he's not getting, like, a lot of them. In 2022, what happened? In 2022, Lloyd and Blakey, again, they were sharing the kick-ins, okay? So it's not like... um. Uh, Lloyd has gone nuts on kick-ins, okay? Because it's quite it's quite well shared, okay? Uh, actually, Lloyd had probably had more than Blakey in 2021. What's he done in 2021? Again, it's it's him taking most of the kick-ins and Dawson taking a few. Okay, sharing of Dawson, and, and again he, at 2021 he was he had a good good average. Now in 20, well, that's all I got. I got I got those three years. Okay, let's get back to the heat maps. Center half back in that game against Richmond, he scored at one point zero one points per minute. Uh, time on ground ninety percent. He says time on ground is, is quite high still. It said eighty five above eighty five percent, which is good. Now this is another this is his other heat map. 
Now, looking at these heat maps, it's not like he, it's its brilliant, you know. It's just a, it just looks normal. It, it actually looks terrible. He scored 120 this game. How does he do that? Okay, let's go to the next heat map. Now, this is a good heat map, okay? But but this one, he didn't score as much. This doesn't make any sense. I'm confusion now. Uh, let's have a look. What did he score? 2022, all right? Now, 2023. I was right. 2023. Here we go. That was a 93, that game. How could that be possible? That's a 93, and the other two were 120s. Anyway, let's go to... um. There we go, 93. This is a 102. So it looks like when he moves out, he scores more. Because this is a 102, and he's stuck in defense, okay? And this is a um, a 100. Okay, it looks very. It looks actually better than the heat map. It looks better than this heat map, and he scored 120. Actually, the heat map's not too bad. This one was worse. This is 119. I'm, I'm very confused. Okay, um, uh, and I don't like to be confused. I, and when I'm confused, my my brain hurts. Just calm it down. Okay, um, so th th that's your risk with Floyd. He's in a half back. I can't see him. He's in half back. He's on the wing. Anyway, uh, that's Lloyd, okay? Make of it what you want, okay? He's scoring well, but would you get him in for that from these maps? I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to pass. I'll take the pass. I'll get someone else. Okay, next player. Christian. I've got Christian Petrarca here, but I'm not going to go in his heat map because I was, I've been here get a, a mid-forward eligibility. He just missed out by millimetres, so Petrarca's out. But let's have a look at his... Um, his price, his break is 125, so probably going to still drop cash. Then again, he's playing against Richmond. He might cook double that this week. So his scores have been 97, 97, 119, 103, 110. Not really setting the world on fire, but he's just doing okay. Anyway, um, Patrick Cripps. Now, this is interesting, okay? Uh, break even is 140. He's going to drop in cash again. Uh, what's he What's he scored? 121, he started, that was against Richmond, uh, 99, 112, 114, and then an 80. Um, if he scores a 108, he, he drops 15k, another 100, uh, he should score more than that against uh, West Coast, but another seven. He could go all the way down to 540k, uh, pass on Crips, okay, um, that's a big pass. Now this is my boy here, Parrish. Now this is the boy I, I want to look at, but his break even's high as well, 116, he's at 557k, that's a good price. Uh, 50k cheaper than normal price. He scores. They haven't been that good either. 109, 124, 82, 98, 108. What's going on? And um, he plays against Collingwood, then Geelong, then Port, then Brisbane, then Richmond. He's got a good run coming. Then West Coast, then North. I mean, this same run is going not just for him, but it's going to go towards Setterfield. It's going to go towards... Um, uh, merit, so they've got good runs coming, so I might even hold settle for a bit longer going by this run. Anyway, let's continue. That's Parish Now, McRae, uh, if you want to get McRae, uh, just don't worry about it, okay? He's got Bevo as a coach. We don't know where he's going to play. Uh, pass on McRae, okay? Uh, Callum Mills is a pass. Has 0% CBAs on the weekend. Played in as a defender. Now, Jack Sinclair is the interesting one. Okay. Now, I want to show you his heat maps. He's down 80K. 546K. That's a good price. And um, he scores 104, 124. One bad game. 63. Uh, 113 and 90. Now, this 90 should have been a 120. He spent a lot of time on the bench. Uh, let's have a look at his heat maps. Okay, we'll look at his CBAs first. Okay, now where has he been? Where is he? Where'd he go? Jack Sinclair. 39% CBAs and 38% CBAs. That's the last two games, okay? Before that, 21, 9, and 0. Um, the game that he scored 70 points on, or 60 whatever points, that he had 21% uh, CBAs against Essendon, okay? And then against goal, in the last two weeks, 38 and 39. So, in a way, CBAs is not a good thing for him. Now, if you take note, Jack Sinclair 
when he played the first two games, uh, Sinclair wasn't in the CBAs, okay? Sinclair only went CBAs once S Steele uh, went out. So when Steele comes back in, it must mean that Sinclair is out, okay? That's probably a good thing for Sinclair. He's better in defence. All right, let's continue. In rounds one and two, sorry, rounds five and four, okay? Where's one? Round one, this one. In round one, he scored 104 points. Played a centre half back. Okay, all a common theme here is is the same as Lloyd, centre half back. Centre half back could be a good position. All right, let's have a look. All right, that's round one. That's a good map. Okay, only a hundred points though, so it's not much. Now, uh, actually, that was a hundred. Where is it? That's a hundred and four points. Round two, hundred and twenty-four points. And this, I'm expecting something nice here. This is round two. This is centre half back. Centre half back must be the, must be a wing position now. They must have changed it. The old days, centre half back used to be around here, and now centre half back is around here and here. Okay, just changed. But uh, what he's doing is he's running off the ball. He's virtually on ball. He's running around everywhere, uh, which is good. That's, that's, the, his, that's his that's his game. Okay, so he's he's around where the ball is. Now, uh, last week. Oh, the week he scored 63, what was he doing? This is interesting. He didn't do much, all right? Played on a wing, both wings, okay? That was a terrible game. He's more of a winger from the looks of it, okay? Um, what did he do last week? Uh, well, last week he wasn't a winger, so I don't know. His, his position has changed again. Um, he's, more in the, he's more central now. Uh, I I don't get, these heat maps are, sh are going nuts. Okay, what did he do last week? Well, last week is same as the week before. He was going. This is a, this is the perfect role. This is where we want him. But it doesn't mean that the other roles were bad because he was actually scoring well too. Anyway, I'm confusion again. But it looks like Sinclair's. Or if you have a look at Sinclair's roles from last year, all right, in his big scoring games, one thirty three. He was half back flanker. That was his role as a halfback flanker. Now he's a centre half back. He's doing both. Bo he's doing both the wings. Uh, so he's running harder. His role is a lot, a lot tougher. Okay. So like last year, he was only a one side. It was either that side or this side. He, he can't make up his mind. But this year, he's on both sides, uh, which is actually probably better. He's got more of the ball. He's, he follows the action. Anyway, I like Sinclair. And the next player is Sicily. Now, what has Sicily done this year? Uh, he's down 70k, all right? Uh, his break even is 154, so he's coming down harder now. He's going to come, he's going to drop another, t probably another 10k uh, this week. Well, this says 27k if he scores a 93, so this could be huge. Um, if he does a back-to-back, -back, he's going he's gonna to be at 500k. This is unbelievable. He's going to be a bargain. So, with Sicily, is he taking kick-ins? Let's find out. Uh, kick-ins for Hawthorne. The answer is Sicily summer times takes the kick-ins. Most of the time it's Hardwick. Hardwick took 11 kick-ins to, to Sicily's one on the weekend. Uh, Hardwick dominated the kick-ins. Uh, what about last year? Except one game. Uh, what happened last year? Who was the main man for the kick-ins? Hardwick again. But but it wasn't, he wasn't the main man. He was sharing it with Sicily. Now he's he's become um, uh, a hog. <laughs> he's he's greedy guts. He's taken all of it. Uh, Sicily's lost his points on kickings, uh, and that's a lot of points. Like if you lose five kickings, that's twenty points. Um, so it's it's a major factor in Sicily. Sicily is more like a full back now. to take intercept marks. It's a bit harder for Sicily to make score points. Uh, it's actually worrisome. I probably won't even get him if he's going to do this. It's not good. I need to calm it down. Okay, let's continue. Okay, and now we have Coniglios. Now, Coniglios is so cheap, okay? 75k less than his starting price with Coniglios. Now, you're going to say, he's, he's no good, okay? Um, he's got a 58, a 71, but let me show you something, okay? If you think Coniglios is no good, I want to show you something, especially for his price. Now, this is 2022, okay? This was... Round 9, he played forward. Okay, so forget that round. Round 10 onwards, all these rounds, he played in the midfield. 140, 
85, 174, 113, 109, 105, 113, 95, 106, 106, 116, 71. These are good scores. He's a forward. Um, it's better than Sicily scores, okay? Currents. It's better than a lot of players that you can switch from your shizzles and put them into defense. This is not a bad scores. He's had his bad scores, but the good thing is we don't get those bad scores. We get his good price. Um... I'm very interested in, in Corinthians, okay? I, I think um, I was actually uh, kicking myself when I was starting him, uh, and the start he had was awesome. His disposal efficiency has been terrible. Um, he's had a lot of games in the wet. I mean, they're going to play in the mud in the wets, okay? They can't be. They can't play in perfect conditions, but uh, Corinthians, uh, he tackles a lot as well. He's virtually another Taranto. He's, they grew up together. Uh, the butchers, they went to the same butcher, butcher school, but um, Coniglios can school like Taranto as well. I don't know why, I don't understand why he's not. Anyway, he's got the, he's got the perfect role, um, so he's on my radar. I'm probably going to get him. Okay, let's continue. Next, we have uh, Redman on my watch list. Now, with Redman, uh, the Red Man, okay, uh, he's making me very scared, okay, uh, although he did score 72, which is not bad at Adelaide Oval, now take note, Marvel Stadium, that's where he loves playing, Marvel, 128, 110, all right, Marvel is his ground, now take, take note of his venues coming up, there's nothing in Marvel, MCG, MCG, Adelaide Oval, Gabba, MCG, Optus Stadium, then Marvel, okay, there's not much, Marvel towards the end of the season, all right, I might get him here, when he plays the Marvel games, uh, otherwise, uh, I'm not interested. Okay, I'm going to pass on him uh, and, and get him when he's at Marvel. Okay, uh, towards the end of the season, he might he might he might go nuts. Anyway, that's that's Redman. Now the next player is Andrew Brayshaw. I'm not even going to show you his maps. <laughs> he's he's been terrible. Uh, apparently, he's injured. Okay, so let's let's give the benefit of the doubt. But these are terrible scores. Um, yeah, this is t shocking. Now, next you have Tom Stewart. Uh, he's high on my radar, okay? We have to get him. I was hoping he wouldn't go nuts last week. He killed it. And um, I'm actually regretting not, not getting him last week, Neil. Uh, now, he's he, he may still lose some cash against Sydney. He plays Sydney this week. Now, his record against Sydney has been 103, 114, 105. I'll take these, one, any one of these scores, okay? He's, um, he's break-even is 121, so if you can get a 103, I'll be so happy, okay, so uh, I'll get him the next week, anyway, that's, that's Tom, even against Essendon, his, his scores aren't really massive, 103, 107, 123, the problem uh, for him is, um, this score of 135 at Adelaide Oval, uh, the ground must have suited, he must love Adelaide Oval, Is the MCG a 92, now he has MCG game, is coming, uh, GMS Stadium, this is his home ground, he's going to go nuts against Sydney, hopefully they tag him, okay, because then he's got GMS again, and he's got GMS coming up, anyway, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to I wanna close my eyes when he's playing, just coming down, alright, Will Day's on a watch list, Doherty's still there on a watch list, uh, Walsh, now check out Gorn, okay, Gorn's here for a reason, uh, his break even is 220, okay, I can't wait to um, switch Marshall to Gorn, and then Grundy, uh, to English, that's going to be the plan, um, now, with Gorn, 220, if he plays full forward, this will be so good, he's going to lose, he's not going to score, for example, 104, if he plays full forward, he might score, actually against Richmond, he will score 104, anyway, he's going to drop another 52 and 66k, okay, or say 100k more, so he's going to, he's going to be down about 520, all right, Gorn, so you can actually do your switch from Marshall to Gorn, then you have to switch from Grundy to English, or you can actually go Grundy to Gorn as well. So it depends which way you want to do it. Anyway, that's Gorn. Now, the next player I've got on the list is Cameron. And we we'll just put it in there before for, for no reason. So he's off that list. Anyway, so make your own list, okay? Um, the list, you can follow these players all the time and see how they're tracking. All right, saves you from going to the players and finding them all. Okay, now with our team, I'm, I'm gonna. I don't want to make this a long video, so I'm gonna make. I'm gonna show you the players that I'm gonna bring in tomorrow. Okay, in, a, in another video, so I don't want to make this drag out and and um, have a one hour video or a half an hour video. So we'll keep my team uh, the way we're gonna shape up our team uh, tomorrow. Now I've, I've gone for four different options. There's so many options now, especially with green gone now. But we're not gonna trade green. We're gonna keep green now. 
He's so cheap. He's 536k. You can't trade him out. Um, so he stays. And we'll have we'll go through the whole thing tomorrow, okay? This was more or less to show you the watch list and, and the players that you should be targeting, okay? And uh, you, you would have taken note of a few that I've mentioned. Uh, the only one that I'm really confused about is Lloyd. Uh, doesn't make any sense to me, Lloyd. Actually, who else, who else was confusion? Lloyd was confusion and Sarong, okay? I don't know what to do with Sarong. Uh, what, what, I, what I don't know, I don't get, okay? So um, I'm probably going to pass on both Sarong and Lloyd. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining. And remember one thing. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Ciao for now. That's all, folks.